in, the, in this lecture, we are going to talk on wireless data acquisition. Okay. Now, in the previous classes, we had talked about computer aided data acquisition and uh, well CBM or condition based maintenance is done in industries where the conditions are very harsh and uh, machines are not accessible and today the state of the art is such that I need not have signal cables coming down from the transducer to the receiver or to the unit where the signal analysis is being done. Rather, we send it wireless in a uh, in, in the air, we can send it wireless through receivers, send it over the cloud through satellites. You know, for example, today we can be sitting here in IIT Kharagpur in the mechanical engineering department and doing analysis of a turbine which is uh, working in Alaska, okay, uh, other corner of the globe. Okay. So, while well, this is possible, in fact, this is possible in real time also provided, of course, you know nobody, we need not have wires. So, we can acquire the data right locally at that turbine in Alaska, send it as wireless signal to the satellite and then over the cloud, over the internet, this can be accessed and then we can download it at Kadapur and do the signal analysis and that is the state of the art. Uh, let me tell you, the day will come when we will have everything wireless, everybody communicating over the Wi-Fi and transducers being very small embedded into devices and every device has in, having a distinct internal uh, sorry IP internet protocol address. So, the internet protocol version 6 IPv6 which is going to come up and which is there, every inch of the earth on the land, under water, above the ground is going to have an unique IP address. Okay. And that is, that means everybody, you know, right now in, in our country, it is everybody's Aadhaar number, which is it one's identity. But in a day will come when every device is IP number is going to be their address because this can be mapped to one inch of every um, surface on the earth above earth and below the ground. So, wireless data acquisition is the need of the day and of course, is also happening to some extent. So, I will briefly in this lecture introduce you to wireless data acquisition as to what are the pitfalls in wireless data acquisition event, event today. When we talk about wireless data acquisition, why do we need to then you know, cable connect a LCD video projector or even, even the uh, projector which is beaming us through cables. Okay. So, there are limitations and uh, if that limitations is overcome, they will come when we will have uh, signals flying around in the air in wireless. But in related to CBM, I will again tell you the signal types and the frequency content. If I see the signal types. and possible maximum frequency. So, for example, temperature, noise, vibration, ultrasonics, acoustic emission, okay. Now, typically 
in a mechanical thing, this frequency of this is less than 100 hertz. This 20 to 20,000 hertz. Vibration anywhere from 0. Of course, you know you can measure all the way, everything is vibration, but what we call vibration is you know maybe 10,000 hertz because all the sources of vibration, like in electrical motors, IC engines, machineries, I think there is enough information till about 10,000 hertz. Of course, then you have to be careful about the low frequency vibrations. Ultrasonics, anything greater than 20 kilohertz, though you would use ultrasonics for NDT. Ultrasonics are used in sonars for uh, navigations and acoustic emission could be greater than 1 megahertz. So, in CBM we are going to come across all the signals, but as you know end of the day we have to do what is known as a digital signal processing. So, if you recall the class on uh, computer aided data aggregation, I had mentioned to you about the condition of signal aliasing. So, to avoid signal aliasing, we have to have a sampling frequency which is greater than or equal to twice of f max. Okay. So, the type of the signal when we talk about acoustic emission greater than 1 megahertz or 2 megahertz, when you talk about uh, temperature signals less than 100 hertz. So, there is a wide requirement in the type of data acquisition devices which you require which comes with sampling frequencies, sampling frequency. The sampling frequencies required by different data acquisition units are different. But finally, you see in the wireless data acquisition what I do is you know if I have digitized the data, okay, it will be stored in a digital value. Okay. So, some x t which I have if I corresponding to an x i, suppose this is a 16 bit data acquisition. So, every x i will require 2 byte of memory space. Okay. And if you for example, I have a signal which is happening in time and this is 0, this is 10 seconds some signal x t. So, if I want to capture 10 seconds of signal where capital T is 10 second and imagine if this was maybe a acoustic signal. So, the maximum frequency here f max is 20,000 hertz. So, at least my sampling frequency should be 40,000 hertz. Now, that means, your delta t is 1 by 40,000. right? So, what is t? t is equal to n times delta t. right? So, from this example n is nothing but t divided by delta t or t times f s. So, that is 10 times 40,000. So, this is 80 800 uh, sorry sorry 4 hundred thousand data points and as I was telling you every data point takes
uh, takes uh, 4000. So, the total number of space is 800,000 bytes the memory require is so much. So, I require 8000 of bytes and if I want to send it at a rate of you know whatever is the throughput this has to be sent as packets or I can you know by, by throughputs I mean you know, I can send them continuously or I can send them as packets. So, I need to have a device to store this much amount of data and transfer and transfer at a faster rate that it has to be ha less than the sampling interval otherwise the signal would have changed because if continuously this data has to be sent by the time the new signal comes out within 10 seconds I have to send 8000 bytes of data. So, the data transfer rate rate is something which we have to see. So, data transfer rate is a quantity which plays a significant role in wireless transmission. So, uh, just to recap you know, we will discuss this, but then what are the requirements of a wireless? It is helpful to remote condition based monitoring of wind turbines imagine a wind turbine which is you know there in the high seas where we it is just not possible to lay, lay cables and signals be acquired through cables inside nuclear reactors inside you know pumps of oil wells etcetera. So, these are good candidates wherein the wireless data acquisition can be done in mines and so on. So, this is what I was talking about the data rate okay. and it may so happen as I was telling you it is just not one channel there are multiple data points. Multiple analog inputs okay. and then this has to be transfer over the wi fi. So, one is certain frequency band of the carrier frequency used for data transfer, because sometimes this data transfer like you said is sent over by, by digital modulations. Now, we talked about FM waves okay, in digital there is something called PCM pulse code modulation. So, the frequency band of the carrier frequency plays a role. Okay. Today, we have the mobile sets okay. in the GSM network or the CDMA network, they have certain carrier frequencies. So, based on that carrier frequencies, we modulate our signals or the voice which we talk and this is transmitted over Wi Fi. But the question is the data rate measurement of volume of data getting transferred per second generally in Mbps. Okay. So, this Mbps is very very important I mean, we just saw the example if I was to store even uh, 10 seconds of data, because this acquisition rate in samples per second in the previous example we had an acquisition rate of 40,000 samples per second. Okay. So, for per second I need to spend 40,000 data and then resolution is bits per sample. So, it is 2 8 bits per sample or 2 bytes uh, sorry no, it was 16 bit no it was 16 bit 16 bits per sample. So, it is 2 bytes per sample. So, you can see what is the data rate in terms of bytes per second and if there are 4 channels you have to multiply them with 4. So, this is very important one has to take in account today we know the data transfer rate over Wi Fi in our in our country we are talking about 4 G, um, we have 3 G, 5 G. So, this is nothing but 
gigabits per second. Okay. So, that is the maximum allowable data which is available uh, data transfer rate which is available to us. So, once this increases I can transfer more data at high speeds. Uh, when I say more data at high speeds it is very important this acquisition rate is something which has to be in such a rate. So, that it does not violate the does not violate Shannon's sampling theorem. This is something one has to be careful about. Okay. Certain terms which are used in Wi Fi method of attaching input data with the carrier frequencies and this is very important. This is the maximum distance at which two radios can operate and maintain a connection. You now, Wi Fi we would have seen at you know even in mobile communications we have Wi Fi towers okay, which, which just you know acquire the signal and then again retransmit it because there is a certain limit at which this cannot uh, transfer and it is the average rate of successful message delivery through a communication channel. So, I will show you an example where even we are doing a vibration data transfer over Wi Fi uh, in, the, in the laboratory. So, what we have here is a motor, we have an accelerometer which is or a sensor which is used to measure the vibration and this is an data acquisition device which can take in if you can see here four analog inputs and uh, it acquires it and then it transmits it over the wi fi okay and then we have another receive so the data acquisition and the data conversion is done here so the a to d conversion is here done plus the data is transferred at a particular rate and then we have our normal laptop which is a receiver. It can be either connected over the wireless or through the ethernet. So, because this is going this has an unique IP as I was telling you. So, this can be transferring things you know today people are talking about internet of things you know that is a big buzzword in our country and throughout the world. Okay. IOT. So, you see every device if they try to transmit data and then somebody receives it. Okay. So, all the data can be analyzed you know today we are talking about IOT then then they are having a cloud computing. Okay. And the data is being sent. So, like I was telling you right in the beginning you know today when you are talking about IP V 6, if every device has a distinct IP address and then they acquire the data, data, but the physics is not going to change you know we still need to have the transducer. Of course, transducer today are miniaturized Okay, but they are with the electronics they are embedded and then we have an Wi Fi DAQ or data acquisition system sitting on it and transmitting signals whatever the transducer is designed to measure. So, today we have I uh, will tell you a story I mean uh, this is this may sound like a fiction but this is what is going to happen and it is happening. I mean imagine if a service technician came knocking at the door of your house telling you that you know your refrigerator compressor is having a problem and you are not aware of it. Well, how this is possible let me tell you. Suppose the transducer was pre installed in the refrigerator and it had an unique IP corresponding to the 
serial number of the refrigerator, the location where it is located and then this transmitted signals uh, as required by this CBM engineers and this data from the compressor of your refrigerator went to their central server where the data processing is being done and if the data pro after the data processing if the results indicate there is something wrong in the processor it will give an alert to you the customer or to the service technician in the field that to such and such place this refrigerator compressor is perhaps you know lack of lubrication it is having excessive vibration etc whatever be it so this is what is going to be the order of the day and we will not have cables coming from every machines so every machine will be having embedded sensors be it machine be it small big and then they will be sending data over the cloud and of course you know today people are talking about machine learning deep learning uh, these are you know I, I would say you know personally speaking these are you know the, the, the same thing you know uh, it would be hard for me to say but it's the old wine in a new bottle you know things like y is equal to mx plus c does not change the physics okay so but then the data for y is equal to mx plus c is what wi-fi is enabling us to get this information and then once we have this data we can use the same algorithms to process it and come up to a level that we can say what is wrong with the machine so we demonstrated this in the laboratory so this is the data equation unit where we have an accelerometer which is used to measure vibration it connects at the machine end through a cable but then this entire unit is kept at the machine unit and then we have an wi-fi transmitter which transmits the signal in the laboratory we have a blower uh, it's actually a three phase motor and uh, if you see here there's an accelerometer which has been mounted on the blower okay and this is the wi-fi device which has been put here so all the cable goes in here and when the blower, blower was run at a certain speed this data was acquired and it was transmitted so i had another laptop here which had the wi-fi receiver it received the signal and then we can see the time domain signal okay and you see this is the 10 seconds of time data of the acceleration in meter, meters per second square of course these are not been uh, calibrated i believe to some units and then measured vibration time history of the blower okay and there was an excessive amount of vibrations so you see this signal measured from this blower and for the sake of discussion here i am showing the wi-fi unit to be very close to the blower but they could be much much away <coughs> or if they are away we could take additional helps in terms of you know the receivers having multiple receivers or having a server where this data is stored and then this data is transferred over the internet and then we analyze the vibration spectrum of the blower so if you see here the wireless capture data okay in the frequency domain once we do the fft you see here there is a frequency of 48.38 okay and what could this be this was an induction motor and 48.38 hertz is nothing but the supply frequency of the electrical power i must tell you uh, many times we take in our country that 50 hertz is the supply frequency okay but sometimes it is less than 50 hertz the problem is you know if it is a constant that is fine but many a times many of the electrical machines which we will discover later on or study later on their speed is controlled 
by supply frequency. Now, if the supply frequency changes, what is going to happen? The speed of the motor is going to change. Now, if speed changes, you know, we had seen from an analysis point, it is difficult for us that the FFT would get smeared. But look at the loading, this would give rise to what is known as fatigue loading. Because if you are increasing speed, decreasing speed, increasing speed, this will lead rise to fatigue failure in the shaft very quickly. And this is something which you just keep in mind that we will discuss this later on when you talk about Turner case studies where faults have been used, introduced by uh, wrong speeds or fluctuating speeds in rotating shafts. But just to summarize, we are very careful in wireless data acquisition as to the limits of the data transfer frequency available to us. You know, today, we are talking about 5 G is the data transfer rate over Wi Fi, but then if you talk about acoustic emission where the frequency is 2 megahertz or 5 megahertz. So, you can understand very very high rate of data transfer is required and that is a problem or that is a challenge. If it is a low frequency phenomena like a temperature less than 100 hertz, uh, we are fine. I mean we can still do it over the Wi Fi and today you would see in, in your mobiles you will get alerts of real time alerts of you know, temperature at a location, but temperature does not change so drastically or so quickly as in noise and vibrations. So, you can see more of these in, in my book. Okay. Thank you.